moment, actually. Recording in progress. What? That's what it told okay, me. Now I'm recording. Cool. Is everybody recording now? Nope. Was I supposed to be? No. <laughs> Good. <laughs> I will be next. Mustang Mach E, despite its rage inducing name, has been very successful, uh, but now it's plagued with two major issues. So the first affecting all EVs is the cost of batteries. Now, Lawrence Hodge at Jalopnik tells us on, tells us on the Mustang, Ford, Ford's cost to the Mach E uh, jumped up. $25,000 per vehicle. Despite this, the wait list as, lo as, as long, and they're still selling them. But the other problem is, is that a new recall. Matt Posky at The Truth About Cars details the latest. On Monday, Ford notified dealers to stop selling the car, citing the high voltage contacts on the battery could overheat and cause malfunctions. More so, Ford told them to stop dem uh, demoing the cars. The real clincher is that the parts to fix this may not be available until October. The recall is only for the Mach E's assembled between May 27th, 2020 and May 24th. 2022. Okay, That's great. two years of production. It is two years I mean, of production. That is a lot. That is a a lot. Yeah. Uh, the Ford plant in Mexico, and it affects about 40, 48, almost 49,000 units sold in the U.S. market. Link to both the stories in our notes. How many units could possibly have been made? Uh, well, there's two factories that make that car. There is oh, one in China, okay. and then there's one. It says, oh. it says it affects 48,924 units, Jeff. So no, no, I mean, but out of how many units? Oh. That have ever been made and sold. <laughs> like, it's it's he doesn't like, listen. He doesn't yeah. listen. I don't read the notes. Why would I read? It? All right. Last year, we talked about Tony Stewart's Superstar Racing Series, aka SRX. Now, after having a good launch, the series is back for six weeks and six races starting this Saturday. In fact, all the races will be on Saturday. Two tracks, Stafford and New Hampshire, or Nashville rather, are staying, but the other four are new. Two are dirt tracks, the I-55 Speedway in Missouri and Sharon Speedway in Ohio, both of which are owned by established NASCAR drivers. It starts at Five Flag Speedway in Pensacola, Florida this Saturday and then off to South Boston Speedway, which is actually in Virginia. Um, and of course, Lemons, or sorry, of course, Tony Stewart himself will be racing in all six events, defending his title, but also it's going to have Ryan Newman, Lemons veteran, Greg Biffle, Greg Le or Bobby Labonte, Michael Waltrip. And from IndyCar, you've got Ryan Hunter Ray, Marco Andretti, and Paul Tracy. We can expect partial six seasons from Elio Castronoves, Awesome Bill from Dawsonville, and Tony Kanaan, Haley Deegan is also going to get two races this year. And with every race, a local star from each track is going to be invited to throw down with these legends of motorsports. The whole thing can be found on your local CBS station. And the story from Jerry Banowski at Auto Week can be found in our show notes. Now, Circle Track, not particularly the four of us specialty, but we know that Uncle Dave likes it. We know Aaron's done some uh, Circle Track work before. I personally, I can appreciate the pure racing aspect of it. And I like that Tony's like, I got a bunch of money. I'm just going to start a race series and let local people race with, you know, legends. Uh, is anyone going to watch this or maybe at least catch the highlights? All right. So I watched a, probably half of it last year. Uh, I kept wanting it to be just a little better. I kept going like, oh, just downplay the wrestling part. Like, stop trying to make like Paul Tracy the bad guy. You know, like Paul Tracy is the bad guy. I, I know, but they were like playing up a little too much. Like, uh, okay, fair just, enough. Just give us the racing. Like, you know. I, so anyway, so yeah, I, I'll probably watch a half of it again. I, I have an engagement. I have an engagement nope. Saturday. Uh, yeah, I have and, so uh, many things to do, yeah. like pet my cat. <laughs> uh, I, but I, I'll probably catch it on YouTube. Probably catch the highlights. I'll watch it. practice. We're racing this weekend, honey. I think we are. <laughs> <laughs> what? 
Canadian GP. Um, all right, yeah. Stephen Symes over at Mortorius has an interesting take on the SEMA show. While the first show started in 1967, it's become a bit of a spectacle in the last few years. And starting this year, GM, Ford, Honda, and Hyundai aren't showing up. This will certainly have an impact on the and on other attendees, both exhibitors and business folks. Ford display, really, it was like the whole wall of when you walk in. It was enormous. Yeah. Honda was big, too. Uh, yeah. Uh, so uh, we first went to the show in 2019, and now it seems to be on a decline. Coincidence? I think not. Uh, well, if you're one of the folks that, who handle press passes or PRI Formula One or any other large motorsports event, of course not. It's, it's wonderful. <laughs> but with the growing EV culture, access to the internet, and other factors, is the SEMA show relevant? My comments on this is when I was there, I was surprised at just how many randos were there. It is not a trade show anymore. It is a spectacle. And mm -hmm. the number of randos with their what do you mean by randos bags, people who are not really in the industry or not really oh. there to do, do, do anything with it. They're just walking around picking and they with four spider bags full of, Hey, we like stickers. our spider bags. I like the spider Seriously. bags, but right. But yeah. these people go, these are the people that go around the at every hunts. table and take like all the stickers. What'd That's you why call the people them? only put out like randos. Glom. No, no. People don't Glom is the giveaways. Oh, yeah. I was like, I thought that was a swag yeah. slur. So the, <laughs> the people who that's it, they're just going around filling up their spider bags with that stuff. And like, they're not doing not any of the things that the show was originally made to do. It's like to, to make connections, learn about new products, figure out how to, how to improve businesses, how to make the sport, the, the whole thing better. They're just taking swag. Like it, it's, it's a spectacle for that reason. I think uh, I read a different article and I, I didn't read this article. So I don't know if the same thing was said but they said that covid probably had a lot to do with it because you know we at pri heard that you know race parts sales and parts sales and all of those things were super strong during the pandemic so what this article that i read which was a different article sorry i don't have it handy or else i would post it basically said that um the manufacturers decided they didn't need it because you don't make or break your sales by going to sema and you don't need it to launch a product because and it's probably i don't even know how expensive it is to be there so it's probably sure an investment right so it's a investment to be there if you're not thinking that you're actually going to make any make any money on it that i can see that being an being an and, issue and for for someone like ford whether or not they're there the bronco is still going to be in half of the boots yep. you know yep. it's going to be ding same, ding same ding with hyundai you know like the the, the veloster and the new ends are going to be all over the place so. Chrissy, what do you, Chrissy, what do you think about the, uh, is the show relevant? I, I, th I think it, we thought it was going to be. And I think when we went, we said, great, we found some products. I don't know. I mean, I, I, th I think there's a, an, an aura, that's not the right word. A, there's a, like a vision of SEMA and, and what people watch on TV and what you see all the YouTubers and, you know, Jeff geeked out, like how many times about all the people that were with their cool cars and stuff. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I don't know that people go need to go there to make money. And, but is it one of those things where you need to be just to say that you're there, if you're going to have a show and it's going to be in the, somebody's got to pay for the, um, the, the Las Vegas, um, convention center. Cause that's gotta be very expensive. So yeah. Yeah. I, Especially I when people like us have two breakfasts, but <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, and I, I think maybe, you know, it, it, it might go back to its roots of specialty equipment manufacturers association, and maybe the YouTubers and the hype people in Hooniverse are the ones that kind of keep it relevant. And it's less about the, the OEMs. Um, I, I would agree that the, uh, the internet and COVID and this sort of stuff, and certainly there is a mystique to oh SEMA and right. it's because it's because it's not open to the general public I would hope that it maybe it, it evolves because even last year when it was just me and Vicky going I still had fun and there was great stuff but I'm not one of those gloms I go there and I I'll look at everything but I'm only going to go talk to the people that I think are cool and and particularly to our interest, I would say PRI is a much more relevant show. But I do want to caveat all of this by saying SEMA itself as an organization is vital to this hobby. They are a powerful, organized, well-funded lobbying group that helps make our hobby easier. Uh, 
So don't confuse the hype of the SEMA show with the effectiveness of the SEMA organization because SEMA is doing some great stuff out there and they're That's keeping true. us they, and they're fighting some really far overreaching regulations on that. Yeah, uh, not, not only that, but they're also uh, fighting a lot for the education for the repair industry. So absolutely. So you know, the, right up there with that the micro industry. trade shows or trades, your, your, your trades are uh, every bit as good as anyone that wants to go to a four-year degree. If that's something that interests you. Yes, they do. And they do a lot and they keep those guys on there. Yeah. So, Hey, speaking of things that are expensive, did you notice that gas is <laughs> just a little about an es escalate. So yeah, <laughs> I've got an excursion sitting in my driveway. Yeah. So, uh, so is the business of policing. And so this is like really a win-win for the police community. Michigan's Isabella County Sheriff's Department quoted that rising gas prices are the final straw for their expenditures as the sheriff announced via Facebook that deputies won't be responding to non-emergency calls to save on fuel. Deputies have been told to, quote, manage non-in-progress calls, non-life-threatening calls, and calls that do not require evidence collection or documentation two phone calls rather than actual visits from the actual uh, sheriff's department. Yep, you heard that right. Victoria Scott, by the way, happy Pride Month, documents the whole story on the drive, including the sheriff's department set aside of $105,423 for, quote, new vehicles, including a Ford SUV and a Ford F-150, each for about $50,000. I was going to say $105,000, that's going to get them two yeah, two. Yeah. Yep, two. This is what our stupid little town I was going to say. This. And yeah. an F-150. Hey, Ford, hey. how about making a car again? What What are they Are they picking up mulch in the police truck? <laughs> they said they are might they have to tow mulch? and haul. Uh, yes. I, see, right? I, I would argue an F-150 is a great police vehicle because you do have the back seat. You can throw some stuff in there. And then they're crap you don't want inside the compartment. You throw in the bed of the truck. Like people? Like no, 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 like shotguns. it's a four, it's a four door F-150, but like, <clears throat> you know, roadkill or, you know, something nasty or oh, some chunks, yeah, chunks of a no roadkill in Birdsboro, chunks of an accident, accident, chunks of an accident or something like that. And an F-150, an F-150 is probably cheaper than a full prepped. Uh, the only people now that are making cop cars are Dodge. Dodge, yeah. Well, then the, the, the Mustang mach the exploder. Yeah, the Mustang Mach-E is $70,000. Well, exploder. this might have been an exploder. I'd rather they have an exploder than a freaking Tahoe and an F-150. Like, that's great. You, <laughs> what are you doing? They're <laughs> idling down. in the wasting, parking yeah, lot. Wasting our tax dollars. Literally. I think, I think the police, the police <laughs> can you, specs Can you yell at a cloud, please? Yeah. I think the police spec exploders Get are more right. expensive than the F-150s because they're the twin turbo uh V6s, V6s the, 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 yeah. The now they make them non-turbo. They make them front okay. drive. They make All them right. down to the, the the basic ones. All right, then so. yeah, then get a basic one on that one. Well, yeah, anyway, Victoria fun. Scott wrote the article on the drive. Uh, yeah, she also <laughs> mentions that the uh, Wolverine State is now paying five dollars and twenty-two cents a gallon on average. Go Michigan! Oh, they're only paying Link five dollars. Whatever. Second most expensive Chris, state yeah. for gasoline. Chris yells at a cloud. All right. That <laughs> yeah, that, that, that's going in the uh, summary. Yeah. Uh, speaking of summarizing things, now we're going to talk about this in a minute. Uh, and this has no reflection on who I'm about to talk about, but we had our RX-7 that debuted and we purchased this car on racingchunk.com. Just this morning, I got a text from my buddy, Kevin Madsen. He's going to be doing some stuff with a well-known team down in Houston for MSR Houston. He's like, hey, where do I go to find a good lemons car? And we've got multiple teams that have purchased our buddies out in California bought that actually not very boring BMW five series. And then we've got another team out here on the East coast racing junk.com. If you're shopping for parts for your race car or your next race car, or just you, you got your lunch set at your desk and you really are tired of looking at email and everything on Facebook just makes you angry. Go to racingjunk.com. Nothing on racingjunk.com makes me angry. If anybody's seen anything on racingjunk.com that makes you angry, no, except for no. the price of that giant toter <laughs> home that I couldn't afford. 
And the thing about it is, is heading on over there to browse, it's free. And if you're looking to sell some of your crap to buy new crap, you can also do that for free, but it's also, you can get a premium upgrade. And right now they still have that stuff on sale. Check it out. They've got a list of motoring events. They've got stuff you can take your family to, your kids to. They've got pinups. They've got hot rods. They've got land speed cars. They've got toter homes, tractors, golf carts, anything you want, need, or just want to drool over. Before you go ask your boss for that new raise, check it out, racinggiant.com. We are really, really happy to be media partners with those guys. They've been great. And I, we're, we're genuinely racing junk users, not just shills that yap about it. I probably spend, I hope my boss doesn't listen to this because I'm probably on racinggiant.com at least an hour a day. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's always open in the background. So, so is everything. <laughs> It's fine. It's fine. Okay. Hey, uh, what do we got? We got a uh, upcoming races. Upcoming races! Thank you. Your wife uh, is going to be like could, the only one left who could yell. <laughs> uh, Champ Car scheduled for a double weekend this weekend, and the only things that we think is running: uh, California Grand Prix on Big Willow. The website lists nine cars. How many people think they're actually Willow cars? I bet they're. I'm, I'm leaning towards the website is off. There's something yeah, off okay. on the website. Well, let, um, champ, yeah. champ on the West Coast just does not do well. Yeah, they do but not. They, but they, they, they do better they than ruin nine their cars. brand out there. Yeah, and they, and they ruin their know. brand before the current people that are in Champ. That's car. true. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. But they're either going to put that on Bill and Chelsea. Isn't working. I don't yeah. know. Or it's going to be the boringest race ever. <laughs> or the most Seriously. expensive track day. Yeah. Yeah. Makes an eight yard race look crowded. Uh, Crazy. Autobahn South course. Uh, maybe that's why nobody's at Willow because they'd rather go to Autobahn Nine BMW. Just in like, Illinois and California. I, that, I know, you know. I know. But, Gosh, it, but Mike Mike Gritter is such a good track manager. He makes the drive worth it. <laughs> yeah, there were uh, forty something. I don't remember. I forgot to write it down. Nine BMWs or yes, eleven Miatas and more Fords than Porsches and Hondas. That's two Focuses Ooh. and a Mustang. There was only one Porsche and two Hondas, and there is a real live Datsun 510. Oh, wow. Right. I love Check the 510. I would give my left something for a 510. Really? Yeah. Had a, Why? Had a chance to buy a, too. Had a chance to buy a five car. running rust free 510 coupe for $3,000 oh. when I lived in Colorado in 2007. Oh. I thought, eh, it's a little much. Oh, it was back then. Now, <laughs> now it'd be 23000 Oh, reset result. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Apologize to Vicky for us. Lemons at NJMP. Right. O overall winner was Boston Winers in a boring E30. It, it, black is not a theme, guys. Black is not a theme. Wasn't it white before? White is not a theme. No, no, no. Oh, no. Seriously, you're the Boston no, no, Winers. That is a great name. You could totally you could like paint the car light blue and then all kinds of boston phrases in right. yellow all over it would be hilarious just bitch about the red Sox or something yeah there you go yeah <laughs> walk around with a with yeah. that boston just accent every word on the car just throw an h in it right no r's yeah no r's none you want to read they're good but they're good drivers Class B was Matt F, Matt Farincheck, our buddy, and the crew from Silent But Deadly in the Space Pants Division Thunderbird. Finally, after so many times of not second in the time. not in the same <laughs> level, but they they step on their cranks a lot. But yeah, now second time when he be. Just want to say that. Yep. All right. It so true. it's, it's uh, they finished fourth place overall, which is probably the best B class finish in a long time, as the Cheat Strong AMC Hornet led the race all day Saturday, most of the day Sunday, and then broke and fell all the way down to 18th place. And that Hornet is not very cheaty. It's you know just a Jeep six cylinder and an old 86, but man, those guys can wheel it. and they yeah. wheel clean. Did they break what at the red flag? Uh, I don't know if it was at the red flag, but it was yeah, I not. It, it was a separate time. Oh, okay. The red they flag were broken. Just, their starter wasn't working. Yes, cr starter, and I knew that because I was three cars behind them. Yeah, the starter yes. was heat soaked, That's probably. A, yeah, probably. Uh, also, the T Bird didn't know that they won until uh, they got out. He got out of the car, and they're like, "Oh my god, we won!" And he's like, "Wait, what?" So that's, that's always the, fun. The, the, the Hornet, as they call it, W-H-O-R-N-E-T, uh, was leading them by like 
20 laps, 10 laps, not that far. Yeah. Uh, class C was BRF and an Ecotech swapped Omni. Go Ecotech swaps. Heroic fix was the wrong way raving. I have no idea what they fixed. A Miata. They, uh, it, it was the infamous, yeah, literally oh. go go get a whole new engine. Type. And we only saw them at uh, the right end right of the end. race. Right yep. The end. yep. Uh, I got screwed was the wife said I could in a great leopard themed Lexus. No one saw until Sunday. Regional award was gauges pointing up, went to the glue sticks for an awesome Dale theme. Yeah. Uh, the YouTubers were all put in their own class, but winning the winner wasn't the one with the most laps, which would have been Chris Fix. It went to the YouTube, screw you, Chris Fix, but it went to the YouTuber with the most lemons experience, which was the Rich Rebuilds crew. I don't think they ever got on the track at all. Organizer's choice was hopes and dreams. They did, and barely, an, but yeah, they did. Uh, hopes and dreams and an Impreza. Terrible Impreza. Oof, it was yeah, terrible every movie. Impreza is terrible <laughs> like if you choose to race a subaru it, like you, something is wrong with you um judge's choice was the crocs in a croc themed celica which i had no idea what that was now it makes sense i said i think it said crocs on the very back of it it did it, totally it did well, the thing wasn't flipped the thing was flipped the wrong way at that point i guess oh yeah. okay they, they didn't have it in four-wheel drive mode um <laughs> IOE was a a stalwart of the East Coast races that I can't believe had never won yeah. a race a IOE before was the El Chubacabra Fiesta. Now before you get excited and be like, oh Fiesta, what like the three something? No, we're talking about the early German built hatchback Fiesta that was one of the many Fiat ripoffs, uh, Fiat one twenty four like vehicles from the seventies and the eighties. Uh, fun fact. Jeff grew up in the back of a Ford Fiesta. My father had one of these in 1980. Jeff should not talk in third person. Just saying. Uh, what is HMG? Halloween, Halloween means gasoline. gasoline. Oh, ha hi, that's us. Okay, great. Uh, the, <laughs> <laughs> the Halloween means gasoline. Uh, hopeless team that broke it, the 2.5 out of their four cars. They kept their theme going all weekend. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Oh, listen, listen to our feedback! Yeah. Thank you guys. Uh, not a ton of feedback online because we were so busy fixing stuff that we didn't post a whole lot. And I really feel bad because we told everyone to pay attention and then we didn't post. We uh, were busy. Were, yeah, but there were a lot of good posts on the or good comments on the theme stuff. Most of it posted by Bobbin, our team yeah. photographer. Another great, fantastic photographs. Didn't even see the camera. And I said, wow, look at all those great photographs. There are some great ones in there. And uh, she had to leave us on Saturday because she had to go home. So she missed uh, all the fun on Sunday. But um, Take but care she, of the butts. Right. But she did take some great photos. Um, Amanda said this theme is so well done. Loved it. And she gave us a more. Uh, she said she gave us more than dollar and tolls. She was very good about dimes, I have to say. Should we say what our theme was before we talk about all these? We're getting to the, like right, like right now. That'll know, be in the main topic gonna, time. But people are going to comment on it. And it's not going to make sense to people. Just it's hang on like two minutes. It'll make right. sense. Like Tom B said, oh, sorry. Tom B. <coughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. Tom B, Tom B said, said, hey, sorry. Damn. Sorry. I missed out on that one. It's okay. Now you can go. <laughs> Scott M. Every, I said, everything below the waist is just kaput. Andrew B said, who had to go back and pick up a shitload of dabs if you're not getting our theme by now? Yeah, I think they're right there. Hopefully you're getting it. If you're not, we're going to talk about it a little bit more. And then Matt F uh, planned ahead. Oh my gosh. He's the best. He planned to heap a whole bunch of dimes to his door. And every time we went through, he uh, gave me one. What was that? Uh, can I talk about, I said, you wouldn't let me talk about our theme. Can I talk about the second best theme in the paddock this weekend? The Dales? Sure. No. The Garage Heroes in Training oh. have their <laughs> Civic set up. There we go. To be Chrissy's mom's cookies. They had a giant 3D cookie on the roof. They had paid some exuberant amount of money to get printed vinyl with cookies on it. They had a cookie alphabet book. Did you or a lemons alphabet book? Did you see the lemons alphabet book? Like a published full up. Yeah, I like, did. But actually I actually had it. Brought one home. There was one over in your bed. 
I know there was, but I don't. Yeah, know. it was in the RV. Oh, probably well. still in the RV. It's around. Darn. It's amazing. It's it's probably for your mom because it has Chrissy's mom's cookies on it and stuff. Yes, like and but the yes. cookie the cookies on the car are actually pictures of my mom's cookies. Were they really? They really are. That. Yeah, they are. How did they take pictures of your mom's cookie? Oh, I because mean, my mom sent them for Christmas, and I think oh. and they I guess they knew they were going to do it, so they took pictures, high res pictures of cookies. Right and, on the back. Do you know what it said? On the back bumper. Thanks, mom and dad. Thanks, Thanks Chrissy's, Chrissy's mom, mom or hi to Chrissy's mom. Yes. The other, the other thing is there was a team there. They were rookies and they ran a cookie monster theme. And when the Called giant the rookie monster. Yeah. And th when the giant fiberglass cookie on top of the garage, he was in training was beginning to affect the handling. They took it off. And what does cookie monster do? He steals cookies and he went over there and they stole bill and Vicky's giant fiberglass cookie and put it on top of their car. Ha. Huh hilarious how oh, Larry everybody thought it was great and that it was, was yeah that's pretty awesome and okay, I definitely got deep here it's insider baseball <laughs> I got some yeah. um, but it's all new, just to say hi to Chrissy Mom. I got some Absolutely. converts about cookies the team next to uh Chrissy's mom's cookies they were loading up they were like doing some stuff and I came over and I said do you want one and they're like no no and I was like so Chrissy's mom's cookies that car is because of this and they were Biscoff bars that were underdone and they were oh, like oh yeah oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and then they asked me like a couple times later after all they were all gone uh, if I had any more so because the first one's free yeah it is true <laughs> yep <laughs> Rusty parts are hard. You know it's not hard? Clicking that like and subscribe button.